Well, we are moments away from the big Fed statement that the markets are waiting on. What will they do and what will they say? Let's bring in our panel of Fed experts. Joining us now is Michael Cox, former chief economist and senior vice president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas. David Nelson, chief strategist with Bellpoint and Phil Flint. No change. No change. Economic conditions are likely to warrant exceptionally low levels for the federal funds rate at least through mid-2013. The committee also anticipates that inflation will settle over coming quarters at levels at or below those consistent with the committee's dual mandate. However, the committee will continue to pay close attention to the evolution of inflation. Let's loop in the rest of our all-star panel. We have Phil Flynn from the CME. Nicole Petalides is at the New York Stock Exchange. Let's get to Michael Cox now. Michael, I know that you were expecting this, sort of this non-outcome outcome, but inflation is a big uh, item on your agenda, on your watch list. What are your thoughts on that? Again, inflation con- continues to be something that the Fed is watching on. I know that you believe that the Fed is putting some pressure on inflation to help it rise. Right. If you, the most interesting thing in that comment was how the level of inflation is consistent with, their outlook for inflation is consistent with the dual mandate. Of course, the other part of this mandate is to get the economy going. And when, when the economy is underperforming, the Fed allows itself to pursue a higher rate of inflation. And I think that's what you're going to see. The inflation rate has already increased by 5.6 percentage points from a minus 2% deflation to, in the most recent reading over the last 12 months, 3.6% inflation. So inflation is been running most recently at about 3.6 percent. There's, of course, some ups and downs on a monthly basis, but I believe the Fed is trying to get 4 to 6 percent inflation out of this economy. And then one of the reasons I believe that is if you look at the M2 money supply, there is this historical relationship between M2 and the price level. And normally they track each other. Over the long term, they track each other very closely. But right now, the M2 money supply is way above the price level on this track, meaning that the price level has a lot of catch up to do. And I think the Fed sees that, sees that we got some, some even higher rates of inflation coming down the pike, which is why it's not time to risk uh, a more monetization with more monetary uh, stimulus with QE3. Uh, Michael, I, I just want to follow up on that then. Uh, uh, by the same token, we've heard Ben Bernanke say over and over again he's waiting for this virtuous cycle to kick in. And of course, that cycle would mean inflation. House prices are inflating. The stock market is inflating. People feel better and they right. go out and spend money. Then the cycle begins. Demand picks up, companies hire, they build, and we have a wonderful society again. Are you saying that they are intimidated now to go the next step to make this happen? No, I'm saying that there is so much in money already in the pipeline. Uh, with you know, There's a lag between money and inflation, but there's so much money already in the pipeline that they're not willing to put more money in the pipeline because uh, it might cause the inflation rate to be even above what they think will happen. And they're not going to tell you, the Fed's never going to tell you, that expect a lot higher inflation down the road. Let's loop in, Nicole. Uh, Charles mentioned that the market sold off about 40 points on release of this news. Nicole, what are traders saying on the floor there? Well, that that scenario actually makes perfect sense. So what we're seeing here is what we got from the Fed. Not too many surprises from the Fed. At the same time, don't forget, moments ago we had headlines out of Greece. And not lo- let's not lose sight of that as well. What I have seen and what I've also been watching is the dollar. The dollar over the last 10 minutes or so has been gaining. The euro dropping. We've had a collaboration of news here in just a short time. You've gotten the news out of Greece, which was disappointing. The euro drops. Also, the fact that the Fed did a whole lot of nothing. We got exactly what we expected from the Fed. And so you see the market pulling back. But as the dollar gains, equities have the tendency to pull back. As far as what they said, well, it seemed like good news for household spending and labor improvement, not such good news for the housing sector overall and business spending. Just a couple of things to note. So big picture, we're well off of our earlier highs of the day. This, uh, Phil, I want to bring in Phil Flynn. Phil, uh, you know, I saw you standing there, but I didn't see the crowd behind you doing that chair, you know, that typical chair that you get from the pits. A little Come subdued on, over there. They're pretty boring. They were subdued. We got a little bit of a boo, and that has really been the best reaction we get is a little bit of a boo, and even the boo was half-hearted. But, I, you know, I think uh, Nicole made a great point. I think your other guests made a great point. And I think the other thing in the statement that we really have to look at is the Fed's worries about Europe. That, to me, was the thing that was the most outstanding. And I think that might be a reason why the dollar's rallying, why the euro's getting ahead. And if the Fed, the Fed mentioned inflation, 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 well, 
take a look at gold. Gold has dropped pretty significantly, almost 4 or $5 since the Fed statement came out. Now, I don't know if that's a product of the dollar rallying or that what the Fed's really saying on this inflation front uh, is that, you know, that would be a nice problem to have right now. I think that's what I'm taking out of it. They're saying, hey, you know, that's our dual mandate. But the other side of that mandate is jobs. What they're saying here, we're going to keep the foot on the accelerator, but there does seem to be rising concerns about Europe. And, you know, I think what they're saying, our economy's starting to get better. Europe's still a problem. Keep an eye on Europe. Uh, and I think they're using the inflation more as, a, you know, as just to show that they still have credibility on that issue. Michael, I want to I loop you in here. One thing that we did not get today, and in addition to any quantitative easing, in addition to any interest rate changes, is this lack of a communication plan. Now, much has been made about being more transparent, that the Fed is looking to become more transparent. We already got this outlook for interest rates for 2013, all the way through 2013. What is your thought on this? Because a lot of uh, investment experts out there, a lot of economists are a little bit concerned about transparency, where a lot of Fed chairmen like to keep things close to the vest so as to not lock themselves down in any sort of bad decision-making mode. What do you think? I don't think the Fed should come out and say we are going to do this with interest rates and over the next six months to a year. I think what they should tell you is how they're thinking. They should tell you and what, you know, under this circumstances, we'll continue to keep rates down. But under these circumstances, we'll raise rates so that people can understand what the response mechanism of the Fed is to the economy. But, but I'll tell you, the big problem right now is not monetary policy. Monetary policy has done all it can to get this economy going. Uh, to me, this is a diversionary tack to keep the attention off of fiscal policy, which is a horrible mess. We're not cutting income tax rates. We're not cutting the corporate tax rate. We're re over-regulating the economy. They still haven't eliminated the biggest barrier to growth in this country, which is Obamacare. I see this whole thing as a grand plan, really, just to keep the attention off of horribly bad fiscal policy that's taken us into a, a second lost decade. Okay. Yeah, what do you think, David? You know, I, I would tend to agree that, you know, fiscal policy is, is really the problem. But I don't think Ben Bernanke is afraid of, uh, you know, pushing on the accelerator. But I don't think the political will is there to do that, and especially going into an You mean Ben Bernanke's year. been pushed around now? Yeah, I think so. I, I think that's a good statement. Uh, you know, he, you're hearing, you know, Newt Gingrich is on uh, TV almost every night saying he'd like to fire him. So he doesn't have the political will or the political backstop to, to be able to go out and do something. David, you, you've been very bullish on the market. I know you're almost fully vested. The watch has sort of dripped. A minute ago, we were off almost 65 points or so from the high uh, since this decision. Uh, is, is this noise at this point? You it know, is. is Europe noise and this noise? And if it is, how frustrating is it as an investor that you don't see the, the valuations that you think are, are in, in the market not being reflected in share prices? You know, I, I think sometimes we, we fail to, you know, maybe we're missing the elephant in the room, you know. And despite uh, the, the problems in Europe and uh, the lack of a direction coming out of Washington, there's some, some very good things going on in this country, uh, you know. Just from the Federal Reserve alone, you've got corporate profits that are near all-time highs. Uh, valuations are not excessive, and I'm not having trouble finding stocks. Okay. Um, Hold on one second, because um, you said something interesting. And, Michael, I want to just come back to you quickly on the notion of the Fed uh, being bullied somewhat, being pushed around. There was one dissenter today. That was the dissenter who actually wanted more action. But the people who have made the mo most noise at the Fed this year have been the hawks. Now, the there, three Hawks aren't going to be around to help make decisions next year. Could that give Ben Bernanke a freer hand to become more aggressive with respect to maybe quantitative easing three or other actions? It could, but I, I think you're right. I think he's being a little bit too muzzled right now. And, uh, you know, when, if you listen to what he says uh, to, when his, on his reports to Congress, they are subdued relative to uh, what, how they need to be in order to really uh, gain an appreciation for what a critical period of time we're in. We're in a huge mess in this country. We have a, enormous amounts of government debt. We've done just about everything wrong on the fiscal side. If he were to tell the truth, he, would, he could spend his entire testimony just pointing out all the things Congress has done wrong. He's not doing that. A very lively, very heated discussion about this uh, event, non-event. A lot of people are saying, of course, no interest rate changes, no big bond buying program, no big communications plan, but there's always next time. Thank you, everyone, for being on this all-star Fed decision panel. Thank you. Yeah, you guys are fantastic. Well, coming up, we're tracking the market.